Welcome aboard the boat review, this time aboard White Champagne, a hire boat that I hired from Richardson's Boating Holidays based in Stalham. It's a big beast, it's 45 foot long and it's more than 12 foot wide. And if you recognise these types of boats, Acapulco, Challenger, White Champagne, Pink Champagne, they are usually, uh, sadly, associated with boisterous weekends full of lads. But I think they should be more associated with just family enjoyment because these are so spacious and they really were back in the day, back in the early sort of 90s and late 80s, these were like the Commodores, the Brinks Rhapsodies, the Broadsmans of their time. Really luxurious appointed, TVs in every cabin and so on. I'm on White Champagne as I said. Now, I've been away for the weekend for my mum's 70th birthday celebration, so there hasn't been a blog, and this is a quick walkthrough review, so it's not going to be quite as good as some of the others, and there's going to be, you know, the beds have just been um, unmade and so on and so forth. We're actually at Richardson's for the handback now, and I've got 15 minutes to do this review in. It's pouring with rain outside, let's get on. So as you can see, join us here in the front of the boat. This is the front double. And as I mentioned just briefly, that back in the day, these would have been their sort of amazing boats of their day. This began life at East Ix Yacht Station that then closed down and was sold on to Ellen Johnson's boats, which then itself was bought by Richardson's. But there are the touches still from the 80s here. We've got the pink sinks, for an example. And of course, the 12 volt DC socket, because originally this would have had a television there and it had TVs in every cabin, it had a fridge freezer. This was really good stuff. Now, over the years, a lot of the, the wood and trim has been replaced, sometimes not so sympathetically like, for example, here. I bet you there was a hole behind there and a small 12 inch CRT television would fit in there, plug in there, and you would then be able to watch that in bed. As I said to you though, it is a big boat and there's plenty of storage. We've got wardrobes here, mirror obviously, towel rail, um, again there's a blanked off piece there which is probably just a, a drawer. Um, we've got storage under here as you can see, hot air heating. There are two hot air heaters on this boat and every cabin has its own vent. As you can see, a conventional what I would call boat double, it's wide here, normal width of a double berth and tapers off obviously because of the fitments. Some of the boats, uh, Challenger Acapulco for example, have singles up here, depends on which boat you get, but pretty much all the same. Full height headroom in here, the boat's fitted with these very nice Osram bright lights as well, and um, as you can see, there's not a lot to say about this cabin, it's the actually second smallest, can you believe, on the boat. But um, very comfortable um, to sleep in, uh, nice and snug and warm, and good lighting because you've got all of these lights, or windows, I call them, um, and although they're really thin, because the whole area has them, um, it does let the light flood in. You can open the windows uh, on this side, there's one there, and of course you've got this hatch here, which originally would have been a uh, see-through, but has been replaced with this uh, fiberglass job, uh, so people don't break them. There's a door, we will go to the next cabin. So as we walk out of the front cabin, you'll see this arrangement here with the door for our second starboard cabin here. And I like the way that this folds, so it's a full door, but to not be in the way it can fold out of the way. This is the smallest cabin on the boat. It's a bunk cabin. Now, I actually got up here to try it out. It looks, doesn't it look, for all the world, like no person other than a child could fit here. As regular viewers of the blog will know, I'm no small child, although I behave like one. And I managed to get up here, and um, it is a bit of a tight squeeze. I'd say the headboard should be this way, so you're not so restricted. You know, you've got more height here to lay down. But if you're a group of, um, you know, families on this boat, give this to the kids. If you're a group of lads, then I'd say, you know, pick straws, shortest one gets this top berth. But again, 
lovely cabin, lovely fitted. You've got a sink in the cabin. This is a real thing that, that's not done on boats anymore now. But it means that when there's a large party of people, you can all get ready, brush your teeth, you know, have a wash in the morning, and not clog up the, the, the bathrooms, if you like, on the boat. But again, what you think is just going to be a small cupboard, when you open it, it's a full height wardrobe. So, you know, these are touches that are good. Down here we've got a lower bunk complete with a light so you can be in there snug and read and again you know it's a snug fit but um, it's it's long enough and you know it'd be a bit like living on a, on a warship or a submarine. It used to be a step ladder you can see where it used to screw into here and down to there another casualty of this boat's age so to go up here is foot on here, foot on here and then up into bed mirror, tail rail. One thing I like about this boat, all the other lights have switches so you can just turn them off like at home which is handy. We're going to look at the forward heads now. So the forward heads, it's not en suite, it's uh, what I would refer to as the day heads and it's the smallest of them um, but it's actually large already for you know a standard boat shower toilet. You've got the normal pump out kind of toilet with the, the lever and the valve um, notice it's tiled in here. Uh, this is another thing going back, very Haiti's look to the tiles, I'll just show you that bit of a close up, greys and pinks and so on. Um, and this was when it was, was first built, you know, back in Eastix days, it used to have a, a dinghy with davits on the back of it. You know, it was a really cool boat, very expensive. Great lighting in here as you can see, still got the old shaver socket there. Uh, what's interesting here is it's got a toilet tank full, but it hasn't got one of these in the other toilet. I've been on another boat like this where the forward heads had one that told you when it was full and would light up, but the aft one didn't. Again we've got a pink sink, again we've got this nice shower thing here, which is what I call a set and forget. You set the temperature, and then when you come to turn it on again, it will come out of that same temperature, so you're not going to be like scalded or frozen to death. One thing Richardson's might like to look at, replacing some of the, the plugs. They're a bit past it. They don't keep the water in. Other than that though, you've got some storage under here with a nice lip that stops the water getting into the cupboard space. Um, and another mirror, as you can see in me. And plenty of room down here to move around and have a shower in. So overall, for a heads, again, nice little headroom, especially above the shower, as you can see, it kind of goes up here, so you're not stooping. Let's go and have a look at the largest part of the boat, though, now, which is the main saloon and driving position. So here we are in the main wheelhouse, saloon, whatever you want to call it, and it is massive. You can literally, and we did, have a party disco in here. So, I want to talk about this. Um, as, as a family space, as a space if you're coming with lads. Can you believe it? We had this whole boat, just me and my mum on the way back because all our guests had left. Um, and I can tell you that after a while of getting used to, to how it responds and how it moves, um, it's actually quite easy to handle. It just takes a lot of time for something to happen. So you just have to be patient and slow. It's a heavy boat, it's a long boat. So perhaps for novices who haven't come before, you know, you might be snaking down the river a bit, but if that happens, don't keep overcorrecting. Just slow down with the wheel. There's many turns lock to lock on this boat, um, and it'll be fine. So just a little tip there. So let's have a look at the uh, the helm first of all. So as you can see, it's a really comfortable helm because you've got a proper seat and a proper footrest down here, and the dash is at a 45 degree angle. I really love this sort of thing. Sometimes the wheels are down here, but you can literally sit at the wheel here. We've got our automatic windscreen wipers, which don't work unless the ignition's on, but they work really well, as you can see. I'll just turn that off. Um, and you've got this really good view. Now, you're very far forward of the boat at this point. You've probably got about, I don't know, 30 foot of boat, 35 foot of boat behind you, but you've got this amazing vista out of all of the windows, and these are huge windows. You've also got two heaters, forward and centre, and aft and centre. You've got port and starboard wipers, bilge pump, water pump, and a horn. 
I believe this is the original engine in here. It looks like it's had a few repaints over its time and you know bits of it aren't looking in the best of, of conditions. But look at this, 14,879.6 hours. It does get a bit hot, um, over 2000 RPM. Um, that's not because I don't think the impeller's worn or anything. I just think the heat exchanger needs to be descaled. So do watch that. Uh, long runs, for example, if you're going to be heading down south, you know, keep it under 2000 RPM and you'll be good. Um, so really, this boat against the tide, perhaps not, not going to make such good headway. But with the tide or a slack water, about 1800 RPM, 6 mile an hour anyway. So great views. Now I did say that we're taking this boat back today, so I apologise that there are some bits left out and stuff, but let's just see, see Mum and bless her, she's leaving a note to the cleaners to get some free wine in the fridge and beer and some stuff. But here's your, your galley. Now look at this, I'm just walking around like I'm in a house, you know, just like go for a little walk around here, and off down here, you know, it's it's huge. There's your two heater outlets here. So in the saloon you've actually got two main heater outlets. You've got this lovely seating here. You've got the sink over here as you can see. That storage space, your crockery and glass is under there. Now because in the original day this would have been a gas operated fridge and freezer. There's still the flue that goes up and the huge vents that would have needed at the back of it. But now we've got quite a decent sized Waco fridge. A small little baby 15 inch flat screen TV and a separate DVD, 12 volt um, accessory socket and another 12 volt for when this used to have um, the 3 pin, um, 3 amp plugs. To operate all of this you would simply turn this inverter on here. That just operates this, you see the red lights have come on both of them. However over here we have got our main 240 volt inverter and a microwave, please if you're going to use the microwave on any boat, even if these are rated at say 600 watt, on the back of the microwaves they're not 600 watts, they're like 1200 watts. There's a huge energy draw. Run the engine about 1200 RPM when you're using the microwave to avoid running down your batteries. And it makes life easier for hirers coming after you because then they don't have to call engineers out for batteries that have been knackered. There is a stereo radio CD, six bottle wine storage, and again you've got storage to put stuff in here, there's nice drawers, you know, there's so much space. Normal vanette oven hob situation going on here, again, look at this, really nice quality cutlery, even on one of these boats, and all really sharp knives, nice frying pan, non-stick, can you believe? folding table but it's not just a normal one you get on most boats this table covers this entire area it's a huge folding table plus you've got your additional stalls so everybody can sit around the table and we certainly did big sliding roof lots of lovely lights again controlled by a switch which is really cool and you can see they come on here but they are also individually switched so if you don't want to keep bending down for the switch you can just do that. Old they may be, but quality. Four speaker stereo system. Most boats only have two as you know. So again it's really good for the tunes in here. So for socialising, going along, eating, sitting, this is the best saloon on any boat I've ever seen. And I've got to say, I know I'm an owner of uh, Broad Ambition now, but this boat, oh, I would love to own one of these. I wouldn't keep it in this way. I would, I would lose a lot of the cabin space and open up things and just have it as a full berth. But this boat has such potential to be something quite fabulous as a liverboard and long-term, you know, boat. The hull is about that thick. Um, you know, with a decent engine in here, 100, 150 horsepower engine, down the coast you go. No worries there. Let's move on because there's a hell of a lot more to fit into this uh, short review. We we'll head off down here, there's two more cabins and another heads. So as we move down here, there is a, another wardrobe here because the saloon does make up into a double berth. You've got your cleaning products in there as well. In here, and this is what I mean about space, 
Now you know when you go on say you know a bathtub boat and they have the double berth like this. This is a single that pulls out to make a double and then you've got a single up here. So what an ideal little family room. You can have mum and dad here and little Bobby up here kind of thing. It really works. Or if you're sharing with friends and stuff, you know, there's so many options with sleeping arrangements. But look, you've got all the shelving here. You've got a full height wardrobe there. And another sink, cupboard, and space to put your towels and a mirror and the lights. The full height. It's amazing. I just can't get over it because when I had sort of, you know, your typical bathtub Salino or Salerno, think it was um, but things like gold gem clear gem amber gem they have the double across here and outside there on those boats is the galley okay and if you've hired one of these boats you'll know that your feet have to go under the freeboard and in the galley space there's very little space to squeeze past this is why I think this boat is wider than it says it is because when we go back out there I'll show you why I think that is when you'll see in the main master cabin but um, it is a really lot of space. You can just see how much space there is to walk around and that's what really gets to me about this boat. It's just the sheer space and I, I've always admired the look of these boats but I hadn't really realised just what they were about on the inside and now I've hired this boat and by the way White Champagne is the cheapest of all this class of boats because it doesn't sleep quite as many as the other boats so if you want a good deal this comes in I think it's about £460 from just the higher charge. Check Richardson's website. So if you're looking for a big family boat, go for white champagne because it's cheaper than pink, um, Acapulco and so on and so forth. So check your prices, but really nice. And I like the way that, that you know, Richardson's, there's a hell of a lot of this boat that they've had to refit over the years and I'll show you why. So for example, you can see this, this door here is the original door. It's a nice solid wood construction. But then over here, this isn't real wood, but, um, this has all been renewed and then we've got the the original here so it's no small thing you know repaneling a boat and and doing this but it keeps it nice and fresh they've put this nice gray lino down instead of the flotex carpet that would get all grubby and dirty but it's nice that it's a neutral color and it's not one of these like bright red or orange linos it's also been fitted really well and doesn't bubble up so as we move out of that uh, mid cabin this here is not a very narrow space. This is our centre corridor. And you think, well, surely what's off over here must be really tiny. You know, no, look. This is what I would call was the main heads. Okay, and it just is huge. This is the shower tray, look at it. It is a two-person shower on a boat. Let's come in here. There's the toilet. It's again, it's the same pump-out action one, but no warning if this is full or not. Again we've got some tiles here, not sure what's going on in this sort of Romanesque scene, there should be sort of a damsel just draping herself over somewhere but there isn't. But as you can tell it's a really nice space and um, I think it's amazing that, that this boat continues to provide so much sort of practical accommodation when you've got all the cabins and then instead of having a tiny weeny little heads crammed in somewhere then you've got your sink here, practical white, not a pink one this time. Really good shower, lovely in here, I certainly had this as my shower. And as you can see there's another door there which can mean only one thing, this is an ensuite for the cabin that I had. Which frankly ladies and gentlemen is just simply enormous. We come through here and it's the full width of the boat. Now on other boats this is divided between a, a shower room and, and a bed. Full width double bed here, it doesn't taper off. There is also a single across here but we just use that as, as seating. Again apologies all the luggage is on view. Normally I try to make these sort of um, nice but we just haven't got the time and in fact it's five past nine now and we've got to be getting a cab and a train. So sorry that I'm you know, hurrying along with this, but I hope you understand, guys. But this here is what I would say is the most magnificent cabin I've ever seen on a boat. Um, yes, it's not as nice as, say, you know, a Commodore Rhapsody, um, as far as, you know, the fitments go and the, the general salubriness of the place. But for sheer height, space, and everything you need in here, again, you've got the sink here, and you might think, well, why do you need sinks in the cabins? Do you know what? 
Sheila came up with me for a night and you know we had sort of six people on here and it really is handy just to get up Sheila's in there having a shower I'm here brushing my teeth we can all get along you know and this boat has got a accumulator for the water it's not just the pump comes on and supplies water so as other people turn taps on it's applying pressure all the time and then the pump kicks in and maintains that pressure so you don't find that the shower suddenly goes freezing cold or stupidly hot um, and that's just a tip that's happened from when it was built you know it's not something that's um, been put in on purpose but it it means that you haven't got that mm, 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 when the taps on slow I'll just show you. See if I turn the tap on a little bit, the, there's no pulsing going on in the pump. If I turn it on full, the pump's not even cut in, but that's just a pressurised water system. Remember that in low seasons, full pressurised water. That's what we're talking about. There's a full height wardrobe there, there's a nice dressing table here. Again, it's a 4240 boat, so every cabin has its own 240 supply, and every cabin has these nice light switches. And every cabin has these really nice new bright lights. Now recently, if you look in the picture, this used to be a uh, you know glass roof. It's now been replaced with these. I bet you Richards have moulded these tops themselves. Uh, simply because um, I've seen it on Princess, I've seen it on this boat. And in the pictures, um, you know, these are shown as having daylight coming in. But... Um, it's not so bad because again we've got these huge windows so light coming into the the boat isn't a problem this was a lovely comfortable bed there's storage under here there's storage under here and it's nice just to be able to like walk around in the morning when you're getting ready and you know stand up and sit down and sit down here and it that just adds something to the comfort of onboard life if you like so I really think that as a value boat for a large party of people this doesn't need to just simply be thought of as being the stag weekend boat. Think of this if you've got a family and you want to bring them or friends, friends that have never been on the broads. There was like two of the people with our group never been on the broads before. Absolutely loved it. And we had broad ambition with us and we were having you know cruising around the system and enjoying ourselves and if we would had another boat that slept as many people sort of crystal gem over there for example that bathtub it wouldn't have been as comfortable it wouldn't have been as spacious for us all so to sum up i really recommend this boat for a group of people whether it's a family whether it's friends whether it's lads and in fact I may even well be suggesting that the annual lads week could possibly take place on a couple of these because of that extra space that you get. So from here on board White Champagne, thanks for watching.